Democracy That Delivers is brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. And now to your host, Ken Jakes. Hi, everybody. This is Ken Jakes. I'm the host of Democracy That Delivers, our weekly podcast here at SIPE. And I'm joined by two friends of SIPE. Uh, they're from the Balkans. Uh, Peter, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name, and even though I lived in your part of the world for a little over two years. Uh, can you pronounce it for us? Yes, it's Czekerevac. Yeah, see, I never would have got that. In, in, in probably a hundred tries, I don't think it's complicated. It's, yeah, it's complicated. And uh, Adis Mukovic, how, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. And I hope I got that right. Yeah, Excellent. You did. Yeah, and we were. I, I practiced before the program, so <laughs> <laughs> as you know. And you're from Bosnia. Yes, I'm from Bosnia. And Peter, you're from Belgrade, correct? That's right. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Very good. And Very Peter, good, you've been you. on the show before. Uh, yes, last year. Last year, yeah. Um, so, and obviously I think we talked about Serbia in general last year, um, but I want to kind of broaden it all up today and talk about both Bosnia and Serbia, uh, both countries obviously in the, in the Balkans and just kind of give us an overview on what's going on there, uh, what, what you guys are working on. You want to start, Peter? Yes. So what we are currently working on in Serbia is something that we started last year. It's a major program of ours now. We actually started running a media outlet. Oh, that perfect now communicates these pro-free market messages and classical liberal perspective on things in Serbia region and the world to wider audiences. So we're not talking only about thought leaders and opinion leaders, even though they are included. Is this uh, both television, radio? This is, uh, we cover several platforms. Okay. So our main platform is our website where we publish okay. several text articles a day. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have a, um, a podcast which is also like a video YouTube show. So mm -hmm. we cover that, and then our content is distributed on social media, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, podcast platforms, uh, various platforms, and we publish daily opinion and commentary coming from the center-right, pro-free market perspective uh, on trending issues. Well, that's a voice that I think is very important, especially in that part of the world. Something we've been working on very hard, uh, and you have with Martina, is this whole concept of corrosive capital. Uh, and we look at it from a global perspective. So you have actors in that area, the Chinese, uh, the Russians in particular, that's the ones that you really have to deal with. And part of the corrosive capital that we talk about is their influence in terms of media and propaganda and getting their message across. So what you're doing now, what you just explained, kind of counteracts that, correct? In a way, even though we do not uh, base our activities on activities on any foreign actor, China, right. Russia, even not the EU right. or the US, we just respond to reality in Serbia, which is people would like to hear new solutions to the problems they're facing. It's mostly economic problems. And then various people will try to offer those solutions, but we so far have not seen a coherent approach that advocates for a free market perspective and a free market reform. And this is what we wanted to fill the gap that gets exploited often by, by various sectors. And uh, this is what we are doing. So we are basically uh, telling stories about free market reform. It's It's success stories of free market reform, uh, the necessity for free market reform, and then we do so in a way that resonates with the people who do not have deep knowledge of economics or even politics and who have very little time so they can actually read about the reform while they ride a bus or or, or in other contexts. But, but this is basically what we do. And I think that a lot of propaganda and populism that comes uh, – from, from various media outlets, and which is motivated by a variety of actors, right. exploits this need for solutions, but it tries to offer very easy and uh, solutions that are not only very easy sounding, but like that sound very nice, that may make people feel good about themselves, but that are not true and that are making people worse off. So we want to counter all narratives that advocate for, 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 for uh, platforms that enhance corruption and, and economic stagnation. Right. I was over and lived in your country um, back in the early 2000s and when uh, Prime Minister Djindjic was, mm -hmm. uh, was Prime Minister then. And some of the very same problems that you're talking about now was going on back then. So, and I'm assuming obviously in, in Bosnia, the same type of thing. How have things evolved? Uh, and I know you're a lot younger than me, both of you, but how have things evolved in the last 20 years? Uh, have, have things gotten better? Uh, what what can you tell our listeners about the progress that's being made economically in, in, in the region? Okay, so from speaking purely from a Serbian, Serbian perspective, perspective, right? Serbian perspective, yeah. So um, I think some, a few things have moved forward. We definitely do live in a better 
environment now than is it institutionally uh, the, the, in, the, the, in different ways. In so different yeah, ways, yeah, there have been institutional reforms that have been done, obviously, and I think we now. And of course, uh, that has led to certain amount of economic prosperity that we enjoy now that we didn't have back then. So we can speak about there have been privatizations. So more economic power has shifted away from the government. Uh, there has been also reform of the labor code, of construction permits, of uh, there is less bureaucracy. Uh, bankruptcy. Bankruptcy laws, that's correct. And several other key areas have been reformed. Of and uh, I think this has led to a more favorable business environment, which has produced jobs, reduced unemployment, and led to a slight increase in salaries. The problem is that we are slowly now hitting the ceiling where without deep rule of law reform, we will not be able to grow any That's further. what I want to ask you about. What, what about the whole concept of the rule of law and the respect for rule of law? Mm -hmm. It was still a major problem when I was living over there 20 years ago or so is if, if, you, if you took a tort to a court, if you had a grievance and you were suing somebody in civil court, and a lot of it depended on if you knew the judge, you could pay people off, and it, it was just, it, it was favor, favoring certain people mm -hmm. and certain organizations, certain institutions. And so you're saying, has that improved? So I think the situ the the problems are still there. Still there. Still there. And now you see, you know, you can do only so much by reducing taxes and everything. Right. If your courts are not impartial, if they're slow, Absolutely. and if yeah. your rules are too complicated, you are not going to have a fast growing economy. And this is why we're growing two and a half percent while we could be growing more than seven percent. So that still is a, is a problem. Yes. And this is now more and more people are complaining about this yeah. because they start realizing how important it is because we have now more businesses and everything. But I think that everybody realizes that the rule of law to establish it, it took. It was like the slowest reform slowest, yeah. in pretty much whole of the Central Europe, yeah. and that there is, a, you know, you need to be patient with it. But we really need to push a lot harder for right. that. Right. And what about in Bosnia? Same type of situation. Well, we are in similar situation. Yeah. Not the same. Not the same type. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina after the after the economic crisis um, also sees sees the pace of, of economic growth is not satisfying. We we have. Uh, GDP growth of two to three percent per year. So the economic situation is improving really slowly, but that's not that's not enough to to, to see significant improvement of, of, of people's people's everyday life. So what we are actually actually trying to do is advocate for for reforms within the reform agenda. The reform agenda is is a document that was adopted by all governments in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina about socioeconomic reforms. And when was that? Uh, in 2014. 2014. Uh, so. uh, sorry, 2015. So it's five years. Ago. Yeah, it, it, it whole mandate has passed, and we only had the reform, uh, the labor labor law reform. Everything else that Petr talked about it was implemented in Serbia. Was not unfortunately implemented in Bosnia, so we do, still don't have a lot of lot of reforms that, that we that we hope to to see, and that's what we are actually trying to do now within within Cyp Cyp. Um, uh, supported project. We're trying to take uh, what we identified as priority measures from from reform agenda with private sector, academia, and civil sector organizations, and to to um, do deep deeper analysis of all eight of those measures and advocate them towards the, the decision makers. Unfortunately, Bosnia is now in the gridlock uh, because we we still don't have they don't have uh, governments. Uh, formed on on national level in, in federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, so we have old governments trying to implement old reforms, uh, old old priorities, and that's not functioning really well because because of of uh, in existence of of new parliamentary majority. Now, after the end of the Yugoslav war, um, I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but having lived over there, that in, the institutional reforms I think took off a little bit faster in Serbia uh, than it did in in, in other uh, places. Um, do you see this type of uh, the, the same type of thing? Is well, institutional reforms were were really strong even in, in Bosnia. In Bosnia, unfortunately, we didn't have we didn't have uh, the following economic reforms. I mean, accompanying economic right, reforms right. that we should see. You know, with 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 in, uh, stronger institutions, we, we we should see even more open institutions. Unfortunately, our institutions are strong both in Serbia and and, and Bosnia. I believe uh, that's the case, but in Bosnia is definitely the case. We are, we have strong institutions, but unfortunately. They are not opened, you know. They're not not mm -hmm. inclusive, and that's that, that that creates a problem because because our governments basically function closed ecosystem that is not citizen friendly 
Well, that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit. Um, what about the state of entrepreneurship and the ability to start your own business? How how do you see that evolving in, in, in both countries? Okay, so you know, you start no, Serbia. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll start, start with Serbia and then we can we can hear, you can hear from uh, the Bosnia perspective, right? So I think that the it's easier in some ways to start a business now than it used to it be, yeah. let's say, 20 years ago, sure. because we now have the business registers agency, which is very fast. So it takes you only a day or two to register a business reg- there. Yeah. The banks are relatively fast. So you can get That's it done. what I hear from all over the world, that the biggest impediment is licensing and, and registering, that there's just this huge bureaucratic uh, gridlock. That makes it very, very difficult if you want to start a business. Yeah, so some things got streamlined in Serbia. So if you want to register for most types of business, you can do it pretty much within one week. Yeah, which it's, is great. Which is great. And that's, uh, they usually in Serbia, we have this saying that goes around like on the streets. You hear people saying, if every government agency, if every institution worked as efficiently as the business registration agency, we would be like Singapore. We'd be rich. Yeah. We'd be like the US. Everybody would be able to get their you get business. get rid of that gridlock. That's right. And I think that we should follow, you know, that example and reform our other institutions accordingly, which is a hard task. But the thing is that it's easier to register. But now when you operate the business, especially in the start as an entrepreneur who's just starting, you face a lot of problems. You have a high uh, overhead cost because from the get, you have to pay, uh, uh, you know, high taxes, high contributions, even when you're not making a fees. profit. Yeah, fees. Yeah. Even if you're not making any profit, you still have obligations, and that's hard. And access why to- is that? Why, why, why have Hasn't the regulations and the legislation kind of... To be honest, I don't know. Yeah. I think we just did not reform that part yet. I think okay. it's just this bureaucratic approach to doing things. You right. just forget about a certain area, and then you kind of reform it 15 years after you should have reformed yeah. it. And then you face problems in terms of rules that are not clear. So inspections are you know, improvising a lot, so you do not have a predictable environment. You also have the problem with the rule of law that you eventually face, especially right. if you become big enough and then you threaten the crony businesses yeah. and tycoons. But also if you threaten some other people who are better connected than you are. Right. So this slows us down. Yeah, because they're they're they're, they're part of the system, and it's very very difficult to go up against an, an oligarch right. there or someone that 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 is very well That's connected right. in the court system. In some areas, it's easier than in it others. Is, in yeah. IT, for example, in software, it's moving very very Quickly, fast, yeah. and, and you can avoid many of these problems. Yeah, but, but some of the older industries. That's right. And, yeah. But most people don't don't work in those sectors. That's right. Yet. Yeah, exactly. What about Bosnia? Well, Bosnia is currently the last on, in, in do, doing business reports on, on many many indicators. They measure among among them the opening of business. So uh, it's really it's really hard to open business in in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, both in Republika Srpska and Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So Republika Srpska implemented the one stop shop like like Serbia did, but it, it didn't show much improvement in mm-hmm. in people's ability to open to open new companies. Uh, at the same time, Federation is is now trying. To implement, to implement it, we don't we don't have the exact de- deadline. That's that's really problematic. But at the same time, what's what's uh, most damaging for businesses in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina is not actually opening a business. It, it is for maybe foreign foreign investors that don't want to go through all the paperwork, etc., etc. Right. But at the same time, you have law firms that that you know specialize in, in in those in that in that field. So they they give papers to to the lawyer and they wait for sixty days okay. to a company to be opened. What's biggest issue in in, in Bosnia is. That when you start doing business, you face face a lot of problems, including that you you don't have certainty that if you if you have uh, any court, uh, any any time type of, of problems, right? You know, in, in in your in your doing business, when you when you go to commercial court and sue someone, that will not that will not you know be resolved really fast, right? Or fairly. <clears throat> Uh, well, fairly, we, we 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 don't have actually data on how 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 often people, you know, complain about about the fairness. Right. But, but uh, the fact is that the on the first level of court, you need to wait. Uh, so it's a lengthy process. Yeah, approximately one year. Then on the second level, you wait for five years. Then yeah. they can return it to to the the first level, and then all over again. So in the process, you can be you can you can you can you know uh, have have financial problems. Oh, go, absolutely. Go bankrupt. Well, even in the best of circumstances, like in the United States, half of every single business that is started fails. 
and that's without all of these impediments that you're talking about. So I can't imagine if you have to wait, you know, five, ten years to resolve a, a case in court. I mean, you, you, you cannot survive in a system like that. Yeah, you, well, actually, you can. I mean, the president of the president well, of, of, if, of foreign... if if you are on the the right side. <laughs> yes, I mean, yes. If if you're doing business good and you don't you don't make right. a huge mistake, with, with, but it, it depends from from the case to the case. But no one wants to be in, no, in a position, tied up for that you know, many years. Yeah, I know. So so what what President of for, for example for, for Investors Council said nobody lost money. Who invested in Bosnia? That is basically basically the truth. We are we are markets that that are pretty pretty good in, in terms of of, of uh, making money and doing business with pe people want to work, you know. But at the same time, institutional framework doesn't allow you uh, to be certain that your business will 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 be you know manageable or that you can uh, foresee the the risks you 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 need to face. That kind of brings me to my next question. It's been 20 years or so since I've uh, worked over there. Uh, what are areas of growth in the economy in in both Bosnia and in, in Serbia? Well, I can I can tell about Bosnia. We have we have really rapid growing IT sector. Mm -hmm. re re really really proud about. We also have a lot, a lot of different different sectors that that are, that are developing. We are really effective in in making products for 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 example for German industry. What what German industry needs? We we you know. So Germany is still a big trading partner for the, the area. EU yeah. is, that was the way it was twenty years ago as yeah, well. EU is the, our, our most 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 important uh, trade partner. We we doing a lot of exports and imports from 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 the EU. So that that's where we, where we, yeah. Everything I, 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 I'm wearing is made in Bosnia. Also, textile. Oh, really? Industry. Terrific. Yeah, textile industry is, is rapidly developed. Peter, you're wearing a Bosnian suit too. No, actually, I'm wearing <laughs> a Serbian suit. Oh, really? Yeah, that's very interesting. But yeah, I am. Oh, it's so what? What about in Serbia? What? What's some of the leading industries okay. similar? I, I, so yeah, technology, so, IT. Yeah, so IT is now the biggest exporter. So mm -hmm. it's over 1.5 billion dollars a year in services and products in the IT sector, which is the fastest growing. And most industry. of it's regionally. Uh, most of it is concentrated in urban areas. So it's Belgrade, Novi Sad, and Niš. Okay. Uh, Predominantly, it's outsourcing work, but now we see the industry shifting towards building their own product be because they know that competing purely on price is not sustainable and that sooner or later, there is going to be cheaper competition and there already is. So there is a big shift, especially now when we see some successful Serbian startup entrepreneurs selling their businesses for anywhere, tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of dollars. They can now contribute to the ecosystem that can produce its own products. And this is the next step for the industry. Besides the IT sector, which actually gathers a relatively small portion of the economy, but it's highly productive and highly you know, sought after. Um, we have an increase in tourism that's growing 12% year on year. So hotels, uh, restaurants, it's a very buzzing industry right now. And we have worked closely with hotel and restaurant industry to follow these trends. I think that there needs to be more you know, regulatory burden removal from removal of regulatory burden from from this industry especially the taxation yeah and that that, that, that kind of hinders the, the the growth but this goes for for most of the industries and then we also have some some of the things like of course services are dominant but I'm speaking about where the new things are happening we we also see these small and medium enterprises that are doing things like you know like manufacture for for like businesses for for markets in, in Germany in Austria Italy uh, we see that as well textile industry Tech Styles. Yeah, yeah, you're just talking about your yeah. suit. It's small, but but yeah, but for example, yeah. I'm actually wearing a Serbian suit that's good. And do you export that to other countries, or is it mostly just? I for think internal? they do. Yes, and there are textile companies that that export. They have some some to the is region. Is it the some. wool itself, or is the entire suit that's exported? Or uh, I think they export actually the, the finished material, product. Yeah, finished yeah. product. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Now, tell me a little bit about the tourism industry there. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I was there, uh, the riverfront mm -hmm. uh, that. Um, but between uh, New Belgrade and Old Belgrade, it was still under development. It was, uh, you know, where the where the old fort is and everything. And they were going to revitalize all that. Has that has that been revitalized? So on the on the old Belgrade side, there is this highly controversial project called Belgrade Waterfront, mm -hmm. where now you see a lot of buildings being built. Mm -hmm. It was advertised as a much bigger project, like three billion real estate. And they've project. been talking about that for yeah, decades. Yeah, but that but that's that's not three billion, but it's still like if you see, it's completely changing the skyline of Belgrade now. Uh, a lot of apartments being built, the shopping malls. There is going to be like they're building the highest tower in Belgrade now as well. And that's an old Belgrade or new Belgrade? That's on the old Belgrade. 
great side, uh, and it's completely the, the waterfront there looks completely different. It's highly controversial due to the property rights issues and mm. the, the the source of money that's funding this. Uh, but for example, but that that's mostly residential, so there is not too many hotels down oh, there. Okay. It's, it's mostly residential and business like retail okay. um, oriented. Because years ago they were talking about hotels, restaurants. There is a lot of a restaurants lot. being opened independently oh, down, of the project. Down so on, the, on the banks. There is many yeah. of them on the banks still. Okay. There, there used to be, there is many, and hotels are now mostly being built in downtown and on the okay. on the other side, on, on the Danube side. Of the yeah. So and, and also on the old town side in this uh, area that used to be like a big like uh, port. So uh, um, there is there, yeah, there the is, potential down there was just amazing. Yeah, yeah, and there is still a whole lot of like uh, land that's ready for development. It's just like the the tourism is growing at like twelve percent year in year, so it's it's high demand. But this is also highly dependent on the global economy. So for as long as global economy uh, grows, I think we're going to see growth in tourism, uh, and of course people talk to each other after they visit but i think that you know this is also a very risky business building a hotel is you know when you build a hotel you usually do it from a loan and mm -hmm. then for loan you need monetary stability you need uh, some sort of predictable environment to work in and you also need the global economy to to keep growing right because you can get in trouble and this is why i think it's a highly sensitive industry in many ways right um let's talk about the biggest issues that you guys face in terms of your organization what 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 are, what are the biggest issues that you want our listeners to really hear about so the biggest threat to i think any advocates of free market reform in um, serbia is that the times when we stop uh, discussing economic issues and shift to geopolitical issues and this used to be the case until maybe 2012 so and keep it's, your eye on the ball that's right and yeah. it's it's the case now because of the Kosovo negotiations and because of the overall wave of populism which kind of tends to ignore uh, real real economic issues and just pays attention to select few and uh, right now because of the the Kosovo deal and negotiations we we are seeing complete you know absence of economic discussion discussion of like economic topics and I think that's a big threat because then it's not the only that we have to, you know, think of content and approach that gives people economic solutions. We have to kind of re-establish the debate itself. Right. What about Bosnia? Well, I would like to I would like to start with, with what Bosnia is, is facing as, as biggest challenges. You know, uh, Bosnia Bosnia has a problem of, of huge and, and and really significant brain drains. So people people are fleeing fleeing the country uh, for three main reasons: for economic despair and unemployment. Second is uh, because of of the. Uh, Political instability because our our political system is really you know uh, wild and people are politicians are always opening opening new 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 uh, conversation about about the conflicts and third is unsatisfactory uh, unsatisfaction with with public uh, services so. Uh, what we're trying to do is actually create policies that will that will uh, improve improve uh, the, the measures that will that will improve situation in in, in um, structural unemployment in taxation because people want to, to to receive more more money in their pockets and to at the same time improve efficiency of public of public of public services in order to to improve improve the quality of of people's life what what we see as 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 a big problem for our organization is that the fact that donor community is not actually you know uh focusing on on economic issues they they try to to uh, bring their own agenda on the table while we think you know and we are committed to to improving improving and trying to develop uh, socioeconomic socioeconomic measures and, and solutions uh, what about brain drain is that going on in Serbia as well it's a major topic it is it's major. a major topic well, let's talk about that a little bit what is the government doing to try to address this problem what is business doing because they want to retain talent obviously mm -hmm. if That's you're right. if you're a company you want you want talented people especially in IT I mean you have to have educated people to, to, to run IT That's right. so what's the business community and the government doing to address this well, problem? if I can start yeah you want to start no, sure. yeah of course uh, association of, of employers and and uh, and chambers are trying actually uh, with with tactics to to you know change the mandatory contributions law and law on income tax in order for 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 to for them to be able uh, to give to give uh, higher wages to their to their workers um, and 
Well, the government is not actually addressing addressing the problem in in, in the real way. They, they they are going with the hypothesis that corruption is is the problem and the source of, the, of of all problems. While unfortunately, and uh, the corruption is not not the only not the only problem. We have more complex problem. The structural unemployment has has source in 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 other challenges, not only in corruption. And and that's where we need where we need to improve uh, to open eyes to to our decision makers. You know, to 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 address those problems. Yeah, I think when we look at the brain drain, um, people claim that seventy thousand people a year leave Serbia. This number is not correct because it's a incorrect interpretation of OECD numbers. But we are speaking probably about about twenty thousand people maybe that okay. leave, and it's mostly young because there are people who move back, which is usually people yeah. who go to retirement. But uh, but where, where do they go? Mostly Germany. Uh, yeah, they mostly Serbian people will leave for Germany, Western Europe, just Scandinavia, Germany. Right. Some go to the U.S. as well, yeah, so some, that's increasingly yeah. popular, I think. And uh, there have been some who to go to Middle East, yeah, but, Italy. Yeah, Cuba. Italy, mostly. Yeah, yeah but mostly, mostly, mostly Central, Central, yeah, Central, yeah. Central Europe, North. Northern Europe, Europe yeah. and uh, when we look at, well, I think we have to like reverse engineer why they go before we can talk a solution. And when yeah. you see why they go, yes, many go like those who do not have high income in Serbia, they will go purely for the money. But we now see the trend where even like people who are considered relatively wealthy, like top one percent in Serbia, which is a salary over nine hundred euros a month mm -hmm. net, relatively low. But for example, software engineers can earn like two or three thousand oh, euros a yes. month, and that's a lot of money for Serbia. This is like th this gives you a lifestyle that you can Absolutely. get in the U.S. with maybe hundred and twenty thousand right. or something like that. So they are leaving, and then when you look at the reasons, so yes, it's financial, but it's also a perceived corruption and decline of you know values and decline in the rule of law they just don't want to even like some some people who have the money they do not want to have discussions that we are having about you know fundamental stuff like courts that are not working corruption they just don't like the environment and i think that to really do something a government has to put policies in place that will generate high economic growth mm -hmm. especially in the poor areas this has to be rapid it cannot be 2.5 percent it has to be over seven percent people really have to feel on year by year and actually month by month things are getting better and then a lot of people will decide to stay uh, also other things so we to do that we need the rule of law which is goes in the same package and that will improve the conditions and i think in general you know there is uh, government has to put policies to release the burden for the economy so they can grow businesses will be happy i think to follow because they want to grow their business right. and you know but 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 i think you can only raise salaries so much in this kind of environment right. and you cannot do that forever but there is now for example people who like startup entrepreneurs who make it and and wealthier serbian people who are now trying to do something about for example educating people more workforce for especially the it industry so that that's something but i think that without Key reforms in the rule of law, reduction of taxes, and streamlining bureaucracy as much as possible, we cannot see a real, real impact. Well, we're getting toward the end of the program, and I don't know, Peter, if you were on my show earlier uh, when you were back over here, but I started a, a new uh, part of the show called Five Years From Now. So we're going to jump in a time machine. We're going to we're going to jump into the future. So I'm going to find out if both of you are an optimist or a pessimist. What what, what do you see? We're going to start in Bosnia. Well, I can I can tell you what's was the best case scenario and worst case scenario for Sounds Bosnia. Sounds good. Uh, and what really will happen? <laughs> uh, well, we'll 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 try to do that. For the best case scenario is that uh, five years from now we we implemented all all socioeconomic reforms and we are on the satisfying uh, pace of of uh, an economic growth uh, rate. Um, the worst case scenario is that we stay in in a gridlock for the whole mandate and uh, we don't implement anything. Um, CPU will will give its best to to uh, find find uh, s solutions that will that will you know get something in between those those uh, those scenarios. Hopefully, uh, towards towards the first one where we get where, where we get the higher higher Im positive impact. And what about Serbia? I actually think that I was here the last time, so it's like four years because if we deduct the, the year you know, that <laughs> maybe you're right in between, yeah, I can't remember. But I'll do the five year thing again. We'll do another yeah. five year. Yeah. yeah, let's do. Uh, hey, actually, you know what we should do? We should we should go back and, and re listen to that show. Yeah, I want to do that. And, and, actually, and, and yeah, I still want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do want to do that. Uh, so yeah, I think that if things remain the same and the global economy is 
going in the same direction. We're going to see pretty much a status quo in Serbia. Yeah. So mediocre economic growth, uh, opposition slowly rebuilding so that maybe in five to seven years they actually have a shot of changing the government. And basically what you see now with a small increase in the size of the economy and people will keep leaving, of course, but you know Serbia can go like that for a while. Now, there is a pessimistic scenario mm -hmm. in which, for example, a recession hits, a global recession hits, and then that could have a huge impact because I think that's something that's big enough to take the government down because when right. people lose even this sense of you know slow dragging growth, they can get really angry and then other options will become viable and there could be a changing and government. And that's a very big possibility. They're even talking about an economic slowdown in the next year. And that's right. And, and Serbia States. is, according to our economists, not ready for that. Now, there is also right. an optimistic scenario in mm -hmm. which by some... I don't know, cadence of events or some flow of events, we actually implement some very radical reform for some reason. I do not think this was necessarily going to happen, but but in that case, if we really boost growth to like 5% year on year, the global economy keeps striving, we could actually see, you know, people getting more optimistic about things in Serbia and, you know, interesting thing happening and happening and that Serbia may be starting to look a little bit more like, you know, Slovakia and Poland in terms of right. economic growth. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. This half hour, as it always, goes by very quickly. So good luck to both of you, and hope to see you back soon. So take care. Thank you. All right. You've been listening to Democracy That Delivers. For more information about the Center for International Private Enterprise, please go to our website at cipe.org. That's C-I-P-E dot org. Thanks for listening.